and you want Mashiach, then talk about it, stir about it, wake the world up. Asher Ikro Eschem, with an Aleph, is dependent, and that is the prerequisite to the Asher Ikro Eschem with a A. So, right from the beginning of history, in my opinion, Yaakov Avino teaches us that Medav Zach in Moshiach. So I wander around the world. And these machen that's on us, and those criticize, and those are skeptical, etc., etc. And it's impossible not to be weakened a little bit, not to be influenced a little bit. Nobody likes to be laughed at, nobody likes to be criticized. So, what does one do who lives? The Tachtun Shebe Tachtunim in Australia. <laughs> it's more than just a joke what I'm going to tell you. There was a story going around the world that a Russian Agoy and a Frenchman Agoy and the Havdalayit came out from a clinic where there were specialists. And the three of them, Achmor and Islam, the specialists told them they've only got three months to live. So as they walked up out of the office of the specialist, they turned around to the Russian and said to him, what are you going to do now, the last three months of your life? At the Chagoy, Ivan, he said, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to buy up all the vodka that there is in Russia and I'm going to drink and bathe in it till I die. They turn around to the Frenchman and ask him, what are you going to do? So he said the same thing, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to live a life full of tithers. They both, both turn around La Havdal to the Yid and they say to him, uncle, what are you going to do? So he said, I'm going to take out $4,000 from the bank and buy a round the world ticket and I'm going to spend the next three months of my life seeking a second opinion. <laughs> I came to Crown Heights to seek a second opinion. Somebody will ask me, you're a rov, you have colleagues, you have friends, or yeshivas, Tamide chachomim, what's that as best to get women to the women to get a second opinion? Why didn't you go to them? So I want to tell you, it's been mentioned a number of times that Bishwil Noshim Tzidkoni is Nigalua Vesenim in Mitzrayim Agamor and Saita. What do you think the women in Mitzrayim, why were they Tzidkoni is? They sat till them all day. Why were they designated as Tzidkoni is? We know the Midrashim tell us. That halolo ibda avid ezor, rachmon and aslam, ba halolo ibda avid ezor, and that included the notion too. You know what was, what made them sit kanyis? The stachas atapua chayar ticho. Because of the apathy, mi koitse ruach, some who didn't believe. They didn't have the ruchnias in them to believe that the goyal tzedek, the Goyal Rishon is coming and going to redeem them. There were people there who worked very hard. 
They have Moses to look after. They have to do our Fortsa Samayomis from that time. They have to worry where to get money. They have to worry about what this Gvir will say and what that community will say. And so Senish the past at that time. They didn't have the courage to accept the words of Moshe Rabbeinu. What did the Jewish women do? They came along into the slave camps and encouraged their husbands, their fathers. They encouraged them to believe that Moshiach is coming and coming now. I want to make one special Nekuda. The Goyal Rishon was Moshe Rabbeinu. Have you ever wondered why it is that Kodesh Baruch Hu chose a man that the Torah designates, as he said in this week's Sedra, Vani Araus Fosayim? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't talk? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't give Sichas? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't give an oration? He was a king for 40 years. He led in Kush. He was a great man with great talents. But you know what I think the Torah is telling us and what Moshe Rabbeinu says? There are certain things which the Goyal of Rishon could not say. It had to come at Yisahus Tato. He couldn't come and tell the Jewish people what they should do. It had to come a movement from within to understand what is the demand of the hour. Esa Shariko Esfem, what should call you? And therefore, I have a feeler that I want to make. It says there, the Aaron, ye and Ibiecha. I'm a great grandson of Aaron Akoyen. And I'm entitled to speak the same as Aaron Akoyen spoke. And I want to make a tefillah. I want to make it to the Rabbin Yishirela. You want to hear what I say by all means. But I'm not saying it. In order to I didn't come here to make an impression. The topic is too serious. The yearning is too great to have pneus of any sort. And I make a filo to Hashem's Baruch. He knows my feelings. He knows that I am a young man who is obsessed by the Holocaust. What we witnessed in our generation has been a motivating force in what I say and what I do and I have no peace either day or night because of that and I do not believe for one moment that whatever has happened since then has this much compensated the loss and the way the loss came about for the people of Israel I do not believe for one moment that the sum total of the reward and the outcome of that Holocaust is to be able to have the right to walk around on the beaches of Tel Aviv and not be called a dirty Jew. Not for that we suffered. And not for that did we lose six million Jews. And the Rebbeinu Shalom must know 
that we, the last few, are still alive and still have the stench of the gas chambers in their noses, the unset shmai soils in their ears. They cry out to their body shalom, before we leave this world, we want to see Mashiach because that's the only thing that can compensate us. tells us that at the time when these words were said it was at the time of the Chorben Beis Hamidosh and Yehmeyahu Hanovi was running in the streets of Jerusalem and he saw the destruction and the flow of blood and a voice came down from heaven to Yehmeyahu Hanovi he said Yehmeyahu go to the quarrying of the Ovois and wake them up let them come and plead for the Jewish people before thee. And Yirmiyanovi went to the Mora Samach Pela and he woke up. Avroam Yitzchot Yaakov. They asked him, why are you waking us up from the grave? And the Medrash says Yirmiyahu Anovi was frightened to tell them in case they say to him, how did you allow such a thing to happen in your lifetime? Then the Medrash goes on to tell us that Avraham went up the Milo, Yitzhak went up the Milo, Yaakov went up the Milo, etc., etc. And no satisfactory answer was given to them. In those moments of tragedy, Ibn Yahuwah Zanovi said, a voice was heard on high, a bitter lamenting and weeping. Do you know who was weeping? Rachel the Neshama Klolis of Am Yisrael, the mother of the people of Israel, was weeping. She was crying over her children. Mevako al What should have been written after that? It's Boneha is plural. He ain't them, for they are not there. Doesn't say that. He says, Ki ain't for he is not there. He, Mother Rachel would not accept all the drama and finger, all the valid excuses, all the arguments and all the critics that told us we shouldn't act in this way, we shouldn't talk in this way. We shouldn't force the issue. A hackalone on this number's medrash and learning and wait. Mother Rachel, she had the heart of a mother. And she was not happy. May I know you know, and she would not come be comforted. Why? Ki ain't for he, Moshiach, had not yet come. And when Jewish mothers weep because Moshiach is not here, then a voice comes down from heaven and says, don't weep anymore. Withhold your tears from your face. Because if women get together and they cry to Hashem is birth, we want Moshiach now. Then an answer will come from heaven. There is hope for your future. We shovel von in the Gwulam and the Eibishta Zok Tzu. In that generation, your children will return once again to our Tzeno Agdusha, to the base Hamidor Shashlishi. I know, I know that you are soon going to go over and say thank you Rabbi Gutnik for the inspiring words but I want to tell you this I want to thank you and the ladies that are here because I know 
אז היא תזמיצו לשבוס ווכין חידוש שבט. That very soon. מחר יהיה האיס הזה. Very soon. He will come out מהיכל קודשי and lead us and כלל ישראל to ארצנו הקדושה. And I will join you from Melbourne. And I will carry a placard.
call to the microphone. Rav Menachem Mendel Chofsky, from the Shluchim of Ritzeinu Agdesha, Rav Tekielos Chabad Der Chobot, Chover Beisdil, Vad Rabonei Eretz Yisroel, Rav Tekielosky. Comes to the third day, 
And the Chacham of Yerushalayim, Herav Moshe Gelanti, calls the whole crowd together, Anoshim, Noshim Betaf, and he tells them, we're fasting, we're going to come to Shul to Mincha, I want everyone with raincoats, umbrellas, boots, after Mincha, we're going to the cave of Shimon Atzalik. And we're going to bring rain. Everyone came to shul, hundreds of people, everyone's dressed for rain. Everyone davids mincha, and then they leave towards the town, towards the gate. They come to the gate, and there's a goyish a shoimer, a guard. He sees hundreds of people walking with raincoats and umbrellas, and it's a sunny day. So he says, what's going on over here? So they tell him, our rabbi, our chacham told us there's going to be rain. So he says, I want to see this fellow. He comes over to him and he gives him a patch. And he says to him, it's not a known that you're Meshuggah, you want to make the whole place Meshuggah? He doesn't answer anything. They go out, out of town. They come to the cave of Shimon at Tzadik, and the Rav starts telling them which Pirkei tell them to say. They finish one Pirkei, and there's a wind. They finish a second Pirkei, there's a little bit of clouds. A third Pirkei, it's overcast. A fourth Pirkei, it starts raining, a drizzle, until finally it starts pouring rain, and there they are with their ankles, with their umbrellas, with everything. They come back to town, and the goy sees what he did. He goes over to the rov and he starts asking Mechila, Fashtetz, if he was Moichelim, on the condition that it'll always be good to the Jews. What happened? This is what it says every day in Davni. Lo oilom lo inevoish ki v'chav atochim. B'chav botchu v'loi voishim. We will not be embarrassed and ashamed because of the faith and the trust that we have in Hashem. They went out in the line. They took umbrellas, raincoats, because they believed. That's the Emes of Bitochen. When it's a darge of lo'olim le'neivosh ki This is what it says on Nachshim ben Aminodav when he jumped in, into the sea. What did we need it for? Because somebody had to do an act. It's bizarreness. What are you doing? Jumping into a lake, into a sea. Such faith. And the water goes up to his neck. That's And that's what it says. That when it came to the Shida, it says that the women had Tupin, musical instruments. Frexit the Shaila, the question's asked, where did they all sudden have musical instruments from? The men didn't have it. The answer is, there was one Nachshin. But the women, when they heard that Moshe Rabbeinu said, Dabul Bnei Yisova Yisov, they took out the musical instruments. They were ready with their raincoats and with the umbrellas. They made a suda for our Kabbalah's poem for Mashiach. Because Boruch HaGever, Asher Yiftach Bashem, Vohoya Hashem Yiftacher. How much we believe and how much we put ourselves on the line, that's Vohoya Hashem Yiftacher. That's what's going to bring it. When we show that we're going out on the line, that we're going all the way, that we really mean it, that we show that we really mean it, that we fly from one end of the world to the other. Because we want Mashiach and we want him now. You know, when I was in Toronto about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, I was visiting a fellow's house, not too from. And I showed him the Nebus talks with the Yalkut Shemoni, with the Gulf War. 
and we were sitting and talking, and all of a sudden he picks himself up. And he says to me, you mean he's really coming? You know? I don't have mezuzahs on my house. I need mezuzahs, I gotta prepare my house for. And I was sitting with him and I was floored. I said, I'm talking about this secret the whole time. And this fellow, I just told him for about two minutes, and he moved. He put 26 mezuzahs on his house within two days. And it didn't cost pennies. It was quite expensive. But you know what happened? Now when I visit him again, I come into him and he tells me, you know, Rabbi, I started to learn also. So I say to him, yeah? Where you learn? He tells me a place where, you know, like Rabbi Gutnick mentioned before, not one of the uh, places that I was really so thrilled. And he tells me, you know, Rabbi, I uh, told him about the Yalki Shemoni and how Mashiach is coming. And they told me, take it easy. You might get disappointed. Just take it easy. So I went home and I opened up my Rambam to the 13 principles of faith, the Yud Gimel Ikim. And I started to look, where's the 14th one? That everything that I wrote till now is as long as you keep it to a limit that you don't get disappointed. And then I realized there is no 14th principle because the Rambam writes, Ani Maimin Be'emuna Shlema. Shlema, a complete amuna, not a parve amuna, a 50 50 amuna, an amuna 100%. The Reb is Machanachas. We're not worried about disappointments because we know that amuna, true amuna, means all the way. That's the Emes of Bitochen. Yefrega Shaila. Bechlal Bitochen. You tell a person when he has a tzore. He needs it a fool. You tell him, God will help. Don't give up. Maybe he's going to get disappointed. Where's the worry about the disappointment? We say betochen is that everything is going to work out to its best. There is no 14th principle. There is no worry about disappointment. Because we're miming the moon shlema. Freg the Rebbe. The Rebbe asks us in a sifa. He says, on one hand, you tell a fellow, have been talking all the way till the end. On the other hand, you tell him that there's such a thing like Gamzu Latoiva and Kolman Dover Lachmona Latav Ovid. Things happen that's toiv that we don't understand. How can you ask from a person to have both things? To have a moon and be talking till the end? that everything is going to work out? It doesn't say in the Gemara when the sword is on your throat, believe that it's Gamzu Latoiva. It says, don't give up. Don't give up. So the Rebbe asks, but how can you ask a person to know that there's things that are Gamzu Latoiva nevertheless? Tell him that he has to have Bitochen Latoiva near him. And the Rebbe gives one of his explanations that every Yid has a Nisham. And a shama is a chelik elakami mal, a part of Hashem. And just like Hashem can put opposites together, He can ask from us and He gives us the koyach that we have a muna shlema, a bitochen till busha, and we're not worried and we're not caring about disappointment because we know that we have the strength to carry on and we know that this is what is actually going to bring the bitochen till the end the lishuosko kivinu kol but till a point where we go out on the line that's what we know is going to bring the Rebbe in his first minor told us he launched it and he said that all the tzaddik until now have been bringing down the Shekhinah. But our job is to bring it down to earth. Everything by the Rebbe comes down to earth. 
The Emunah Mashiach is tangible. It's, you can touch it. You can feel it. It's down to earth. Toya, mitzvahs, Emunah, Neshama, all in Yonah Melakus, they never bring down to earth. Because that's the Tafkid. The Tafkid of Mashiach is to bring Elakus Begolim. The Niglik Void Hashem, the Roll Kol Bosser Yaftov. That the Bosser should see the Elakus. To bring everything down to earth. And Bor Hashem, that we have a Shaykhis, that we're seeing it all happen in front of us, to bring you down to earth. You know, there are those that tiny to me. You know, this whole business is just above me. They tell me it's above me. I'm just going to sit back and wait. I don't want to get involved. It's just too much. I'll lead a normal life, normal, and we'll carry on. And I tell them, you know, there's a story. The Friedrich Rebbe in Russia, there was a time when he took 10 chassidim and he made a convent convent, an oath. They're going all the way till the last drop of blood. Because we need total mysterious nefesh. Ten chsi, together with the free care. When they walked out of the room, they were scared, frightened, because of the awesomeness of what the Rebbe just did. And they went over to the Rebbe's secretary. And they told him, we're scared. We're frightened. They told me, Chacher, Chacher Feig, go into the Rebbe, tell him, what should we do? What does it mean? He walks into the Rebbe. He tells the Rebbe that they're scared, they frightened everyone. And the Rebbe tells him, I don't understand. If there's no fear in the heart, how is there fear in the rest of the body? If there's no fear, if there's no scares in the mind, how is all the hands and the feet fear? The Rebbe told somebody, by dollars, about a year ago it was, came over to him, and the Rebbe told him, Mizokt, that I'm crazy about Mashiach. This was what the Rebbe said. And you know, ever since then, when people come over to us and they tell me, you know, you people are crazy. I say, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> because if the Rebbe doesn't stop day and night, everything that he talks about and everything that he breathes is Mashiach, then all our limbs and our hands and our bodies and everyone has to be running around with one track minds. How do we bring him down here? How do we bring Mashiach? That's what has to be done. That's what's important. But how do we get to that point? So the Rebbe tells us that also. He says, you want to walk out of your normal, the rut, the regular run, every day. Start learning about it. If you want to love Hashem, you want to love your fellow Jew, you want to have simcha, you got to learn. You got to think about it. So if you want to really feel about Mashiach, if you want to start living with Him, you got to learn about it. You've got to bring from your faith into your learning, into your heart, and then it'll come out in action. We have to prepare our homes. We have to be Mechabal Mashiach in our homes also. Do you know that there's homes in Eretz Yisrael that the children have their Shabbos clothes ready next to their beds? Because they're waiting any minute now that the Eretz is gone and will go to Eretz Yisrael? And every day by the students in the houses, there are people that are telling Werther over about Mashiach and Gula. There's enough books today. And stock is lining up and people are giving it in their homes. And they're worrying that there should be pushkas where they ever said. And that there should be swarm the way it should be. They're preparing their homes. They're taking out the things that aren't supposed to be there too. But we also, we also have to go out on the myths of Mashiach to the world. We have to get the world prepared to. The world is ready. But we have to get it even better ready. You know, once, it was, it was uh, this year, after Shavuos, 
We went to visit the Rabboni Chabad of Eretz Yisrael every year after Shavuos. We come to visit the Rabboni Maroshim, the chief rabbis of Israel. We went to visit them to give over the Sifas from the Rebbe, talk. And we brought them the Dvar Malchus, the Rebbe's Sifas about Mashiach and Gula. We had two pamphlets with about five, six Sifas in each one. And we put it on the table. The Rabbi Leo, the Rishi Lutzian takes a look at it and he tells me, he asks us, when does the Rebbe have time to write all these things and to put them out? So one of the Rabbonim says to him, you know like Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu was a manig and he had to learn and he was writing Sifri Torah and he had to run Klai So So Rabbi says, how can you compare? Moshe Rabbeinu was a manig was a leader in a desert with a couple of million people. The Rebbe's Zul is the manik of the Gans Havel, the whole world. <laughs> so you think, no, Rebbe Liao sees it. Two weeks ago I had to be in an emergency ward in the middle of the night. In Rehobot. I'm sitting over there saying, the boy in Shalom. Vos two of the why they have to be here. And I brought in a couple of secrets in the air and I was looking at them and all of a sudden a Yid walks in. Elder Yid, board and pays, beard and pays, walks in and he says to me, Oh, he says, you know, Phil did say on the mic, I want to tell you something. He says, I was going on a bus and a young fellow, a non religious fellow, sits down next to me and he tells me, Are you a Chabadnik? So I set him back. Who's not a, ch a Chabadnik today? <laughs> and then he points to the Sikhs and he says to me, Mitazolka Sikhs, with such manhigis and leadership, who can't be a Chosid Chabad today? He says to me. I see myself in punishment. I see how the world is even more ready than we are. Do you know why? By us, it's not a Chiddush. We knew all this was going to happen. The Rebbe's been telling us all the time. So it's not such a big, it's not so new. We were told when we were in, when we used to come to the Fabrengis and the Rebbe used to finish off the Fabrengis with Nyet Nyet Nikavo, that he's chipping away at the Iron Curtain every time he sings that Nigu. We knew it was going to happen. But the world didn't know it was going to happen. They were living with a different reality. And by then that everything has fallen apart. It's poof. So when you come to them and you tell them, you know, this is times, Mashiach is here, it's Gola. They're ready to hear much faster than you really think. You just got to go out and do it. People say, how, what? There was once a chosid in the times of the Rebbe Marash that he got all stirred up to start serving Hashem seriously. And he went into the Rebbe Marash and he says, how do I start? The Rebbe Marash says, how do you start? Either you get him cut. Give yourself over. Your, your own things put away on the side. If you give yourself over, you'll find ways. The same thing. To prepare the world to go out, to speak. Always be ready with something to tell them. We must get the world ready too. As long as we're in this, we're going all the way. I was speaking to Aid. I told him that they once asked Al Pereira, who's greater, Moshe Rabbeinu or Mashiach Sikain? And Al Pereira said, Mashiach? He says, you know why? Moshe is a doctor without experience. Mashiach is a doctor with a lot of experience. So the question that's asked, what is that supposed to mean? So some of them give the explanation that it says about Mashiach that he has the Maila that Moshe Vadoi that he'll just give a smell, a look, and already know. A doctor that's inexperienced, you go in, he asks you 20 questions, he's got to call another doctor, he's not sure what to give to you, but a doctor that's experienced, you just walk in, and he raises his hand, ready, he has an answer. He just looks at you. Who's telling the heat? So he tells me, you know what? That's what goes on every Sunday by dollars. I say, you're buying a shoe. We just have to go out and speak about Mashiach in the Ula. And that's, that's what prepares the world, that they bring in the Kabul Pnei Mashiach Tzikim.
Nine months ago, like it was mentioned before, the Rebbe gave, gave it to us in our hands, and he says, start doing it. They tell a miser that once there was a chassid of oblivious of Berdichev, that he didn't pay rent for many, many months to his Goyish Balabos. And his Goyish Balabos called him and he asked, come to me, I'd like to speak to you about the rent. So he went to his head and he said, Rebbe, what am I going to do? So Rebbe tells him, you know what, I'll give you a note. I'll give you a letter to the poets. And he gives him, he gives him a letter. He gives him a note. Puts it into an envelope and he gives it to him and the chosid walks out. And as he walks out, he starts walking towards the poets and he starts thinking, maybe I should see what's in the note because when I come to the poets, I should know exactly what's going on to be able to add on. So he opens up the note, and he sees that the note is empty. He gets, oh, the note is empty. I'm going to go now to the products with an empty note. What's going to happen? So he turns around and he starts going home. I can't go with an empty note. And then while he's going home, he says, you know, the Rebbe gave me the note. He wouldn't have fixed me in such a way. Where's my amuna? And he turns around and he goes to the products. When he comes to the Poritz, he walks in and he gives the note to the Poritz, and the Poritz takes out the note, and he starts reading it. And he's reading and reading and reading, and he sees he's reading. And after he reads, he says, you know what? You don't have to pay me any of the debt that you owe me. The fellow runs out of the house straight to Belivitsa Bradichev to tell him, Rebbe, the note helped. So he says, yeah. What happens? He says, I don't have to pay the debt, he said. He says, that's what he said? He says, tell me, what happened when you left my house till you got to the porous? He says, what do you mean? What happened? Tell me. Hector, Ekin, and Becken, until finally he says it. He says, oh, yes, Fashtayich. Because he was supposed to give you the hotel as a present. But the Eschanai Mishdo. We have to realize that when the Rebbe gives us the task and we're here tonight because we realize it but we have to realize it more and more that we have the kodesh and we can bring it to be Mekabal Pnei Mishir Tzitein I just want to conclude by Kabbalah's Ponim we know that all the Rebbeim come to a Kabbalah's point. From the Alter Rebbe, the Mitle Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, the Rebbe Marash, and the Rebbe Rashab, and the Friedrich Rebbe, and the Rebbe is all gesund sein Gereusche. They all come to a Kabbalah's point. We're here. We're with our raincoats. We're with our umbrellas. The whole world is listening. We're all here. The Rebbe said that Mashiach stands on the roof of the Beis Amigdash and he says, he gives man gulaschen, that the gula, the time of redemption has come. And the Rebbe says in the Sikha, he says, it can't mean that he's standing literally on the Beis Amigdash because then he doesn't have to announce that the time of redemption has come because then you'll see you'll see the base of English so what does it mean? he says he stands on the roof of the base Migdish Ma'at base Rabbeinu Shevabov he stands on the roof and he announces he gives man we turn to the Rabbeinu Shevabov and we beg. And we're mishana. And we don't even have any words what to say. How much? But we say the boy Yishalon. We want the Rebbe off the roof. We want him to
to take us out now. The court of Mamish now. More than anything at all, I sat and wished that I would not again have to stand at this microphone tonight. But since I am, and we are still willing to stop the program, I would like to call to the microphone Harav Shleima Majeski, the Mashpia of Mahon Khanna.
disturbing about doing a base Mashiach and every month and every week and every sikh every fabrengan this is intensified and a new word, a new expression even more than what was said before <laughs> the Rebbe already said that Kola Kola Kitsin oh, yeah. Eden collectively already raw you for B.S. Mashiach we did all the trouble, we went through enough everything is already done and if we're at that point why is it so important that unless we acknowledge these Nisim somehow it can't happen it seems This is connected to the singing of the Kabbalah's Pani that we're making tonight, which is based on the Rebbe Zawazunzai's words, where the Rebbe said that everything is here already, the Gaul is here, Mashiach is here, the Rebbe used the term Hashem Bez Galus, he's already revealed, and he said all we have to do is to be Makabo playing Mashiach. And that's when he spoke about Kiddush Levana. What does it mean we have to be Makabo? Does it just mean that we have to show that we really want Him? I think that's been going on all the years. We've been shouting and screaming, we want Mashiach now. What could be more than that? The last few weeks, there's a new Russian that Rebbe has been using. And again, that everything is ready. And the Tisha Shem Great, Lev Yosem Shirabar, and Yaina Meshuma. And the Rebbe says, all we have to do is open our eyes and see. What does that mean, practically speaking? I mean, does it mean that it's already here we just have to see it? We know that what we see going on in the world today, this is not the goal that we're waiting for. On the other hand, is there something that we're not seeing, that we're not informed, we're not noticing, something that's going on? That happened in the Egin. And the Kherif and the Rebbe Sikh, it seems, when a person sees, there are two things. Number one is the physical, experience of vision, which humans and the animals have. Even in a camera, there's a physical aspect of vision. The second thing is that when you see something, your brain interprets it and explains it, and you understand what you see. When we use the term to open our eyes, it can mean both things. One way means open our eyes literally to see something which you hadn't seen before. If you would say that Elia Nobi is in the room and there's a bris and you don't see him because our eyes have to be open to see something which is there, we can't see it. But there's also another explanation and that is when you see something which you saw all the time but now you see it differently, you understand it differently completely from a different perspective that is also the same concept. In Yiddish we use that expression, in English People say, Etner Gaff in the Aiden. In English, there's a word, an eye opener. It doesn't mean that the eye was literally open. It means I see it from a new perspective. I didn't see it this way before. What's going on in the world today, people use all sorts of words to, to describe what's going on. What's going on in the Soviet Union, for example, if someone would say, Soviet Union or America and other countries, that the world is going through a, a major political upheaval. It's a very powerful way of describing it. And the Rebbe is telling us, no, that's not the way to look at it. We have to look at what's going on, that this is not stand something happening in the world, or something unusual happening in the world. But what's going on now is part of the process of the Gula Amitiz Vashlem. What's happening is leading up to Gula. It's the unfolding of the Gula Amitiz Vashlem. What's happening in the Soviet Union is actually a fulfillment of the Nevoah, where it says that when Mashiach will come, the Malchus HaRasha, those Malchus will become destroyed. When Mashiach will come, when there'll be the Gula, and that's happening now. This is that time. So in other words, when a person looks at what's going on, you can see it three ways. An ordinary person looks at it from the outside, and it gives political explanations to what's going on. The second way is where you say, no, it's not an ordinary event. It's a ness. It's a miracle. And I think what the Rebbe is telling us in the Sikha is even to go beyond that. It's not an ordinary miracle. What we're seeing is the actualizing and the fulfillment of the Nevoahs connected to Gula. This is the process of Gula actually taking place. In other words, what it says in different places, 
It's not just that it, the sign is now that this is that time. But this is it. What we see happening is a fulfillment of what it says. During the Six Day War, everyone knows there's a tremendous Israelis by Yidin all over the world to Tshuva. So the Rebbe said that this is what it says. In other words, it says in the Nevoah, there will come a time, the Ebeshter will blow this big Shefer that will wake up Yidin from all over the world. And the Rebbe said, that six day war, that was the Shefer. That was the fulfillment of that Indian. In other words, it's actually happening now and that's what we're experiencing now. When you see hundreds and thousands of Yidin going to Eretz Yisrael, at a time where the problem number one in Eretz Yisrael was there are not enough people. Suddenly there are hundreds and thousands of people going to Eretz Yisrael and the biggest problem is where do we put all these people? This is not just a, a, a change. It's not just a nest. We have to change our perspective and look at it. This is the Indian HaGaula leading up to the Indian of Gula. This is the unfolding of the Indian of B.S. Mashiach. The Persian Gulf War was incredible miracles, as the Rebbe said, as we everyone saw later what was written up about the war and how much was not even told yet. And again, the Rebbe said, this is a fulfillment of a Nevoah of Yalta Shemaini. And what we see now happening in Russia, the same. So this is the union of Gaula. And this is what's leading up to, why doesn't it happen in the complete way? After all, there's still so many things going on, which we know that's not Gaula yet. And the answer is, the reason why the Gaula aspect of all these events is not taking on its full identity, the Rebbe is giving us the reason and telling us, is because we're not identifying it that way. If we will see that what is going on now is in Yonim of Gaula, not Stamines, and will identify it that way, then the events will take on a new identity openly, and all the Yonim of Gaula will come out at 100%. It's a very basic principle in Tehran. It's talked about a lot in Chassidus. It says, Gam ha'olam, so'olam nosam beliber. That the world depends on the heart, on our heart. That the way we do things, the way we act, that has an effect on what goes on in the whole world. And it's explained in Chassidus, the way we see something, our perspective, that has an effect on what's going on in the world. As the example is given with the of Lashon Hara, that if you look at a person, if you look at your child, one looks at their spouse and sees in them negative things and that's how they begin to identify them as a negative person then they're seeing it that way, it says in Chassidus, actually causes that negativity to surface and that becomes their identity. If you look at a Yid and you see the good in him, you look at your child or your spouse and you see the good, the qualities and that's how you identify them then that will become their identity. That surfaces and, and that, that's the identity that they take on. And that's what the Rebbe has been doing for the last 42 years. By every Fabrengen, the Rebbe talks about the Nefesh kiss, the Pintel Yid, how every Yid has an unconditional love for the Ebesh, the Fetera Mitzvahs. And every Yid Be'etzem is pure and good. And he talks about it. He trained us to look at the Yid that way. And that became the identity of Yidin and that's why we find this massive tnuah of tshuva on a global level that even all over their identity is coming out. So that means that what's going on today has one identity which is on the surface, nature. The other identity is that it's a ness. And there's a deeper identity that it's Gaula and part of B.S. Mashiach. And this is what the Rebbe is telling us. And I think that this is supposed to be what will accomplish tonight and hopefully finish tonight that to bring to our awareness and to awareness of everyone around us in the entire world that the times we're living in now this is, as the Rebbe said, the Gaula is, is already ready the table is all set, everything is here if we'll begin to change our perspective and look at it differently and see that this is Indian Gaula it'll take on that identity and it'll become that way and therefore, when we hear the news and you hear something happening, you hear that there are Goyim that are accepting Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, you hear all the Nisim and the Flois, and what goes on here on Sunday, the Nisim that the Rebbe performs every Sunday with children, 
people who hadn't had children for many years and they have children, people on the drug that are not are sick and they become well. The different stories that go on constantly, it's all part of the change that's taking place in the world. The inyanim of the nigla kveda vaya, that the eibishter, the shechina and getlakite will be revealed in the whole world. And therefore, and just to conclude that it's interesting to note, when the Rebbe spoke about Russia, and said that it was an incredible miracle. The Rebbe said, what's the miracle? That there was such a massive change in the whole country and without war. So the Rebbe said, how did it take place, the change? The change wasn't through a war, but what changed was the minds of people that are in charge of the country, things changed in their mind, and then the whole country changed. In other words, what you see happening was their perspective changed, their ideas changed, and that made a major change in the Soviet Union, which made in turn a major change in the whole world. And that's the way it will be with us, that if we change our way of looking and our perspective, and we start seeing the Rebbe Ethan and the Egan to begin to look at everything going on from a different way, then this will come out the Golu, that the Indian Hagula and the Indian of Mashiach will come out in an open way and identified completely with all the young that go along with Gula and will be able to make the bracha of Shechiyonu, Vikimonu, Vigiyonu, Guzman Azeh take it from Yad Marsh. Since Mashiach is imminently coming and we are sure of it with our whole hearts and souls but for that one second before he comes, there are two people I would like you to answer Amen for Rafur Shlema. Dvorulea Bashulamis and Sarachana, and I don't know the mother's name. I would like to say it again. Dvorulea Bashulamis and Sarachana. Please say Amen with your whole heart and soul. For Rafur Shlema Krevo this second now. To say that has been changed a little in this world of miracles, in this world of miracles of communication. And as you know, every bit of communication was only created for one thing, for Kedusha. We will soon be hearing, is it now? When I say the word now, now, it has a different meaning, doesn't it? Is it now, now? Ladies, Rav Kunin's Rav Kunin's hookup, is it now? It's ready. Rabbi Shlomo Kunin, it's not ready. Oh, up there. If you want an answer, you look up. I should wait. Okay. I would like to call to the microphone while we're waiting. From Australia, the Shliach of the Rebbe of Melbourne, Australia, Rabbi Yitzchak Groner. <laughs> Ladies, we have something very, very special afterwards, and I would like you to please bear with us to the end. We may have surprises. Please, please bear with us till the end. Rabbi Yitzchak Groner.
Shotnik said, I'm not here to be, make Islam in the Pachin. We have to do something with Poyal. If the Rebbe comes or if the Rebbe doesn't come, this historic moment in the history of world Jewry, which was done with an Amitish Dabar, I heard that the people who organized it meant it with an MS. And MS breaks through. If it's not tonight, it will be tomorrow. But this evening, tonight, if we all go away, strengthened, hardened, and also as the Rebbe wrote in the answer with a Bepoel Mamish, this will hasten Mashiach quickly. Don't be... I am... We have to be careful. Don't go out disillusioned. Go out strengthened. Go out with the understanding that I'm Yisrael Chai and He Neze Oimei Dacha Kosleinu. That there is yet a little bit we don't know. The Rebbe says a little bit to do. As I said, we have to strengthen ourselves. You give the encouragement to us. There has to be the strengthening first of all. Base Rabbeinu Shebebobel that the place of oil, I want to speak about in the next week, Sedra Boy, it speaks about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Geula, where it says, Ulechol b'nei Yisrael, hoya oil b'moy shweisom. In all Jewish homes, there was light, the light of Torah. My friends, the light that comes out from Beis Rabbeinu Shebebobel illuminated hundreds of thousands of homes. That in itself is Moshiach. That in itself is a salvation, bringing back hundreds of thousands of Jewish children to the folds of Torah, the Yira, in Aves Yisrael, and Achtus and Tzniyus. Isn't that the greatest pool of the Shia? Oil! 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 <laughs> Sneus, Sneus, Sneus. 
Tznius called Kvudo Mas Basmelach Pnimo. The concept of Tznius Bashenkeit, which is also one of the fundamental factors. And my friends, I want to finish. I saw when we speak about oil, the oil shall Moshiach. You know what oil is? Someone said to me just now, sometimes when you have a very bright light, it, 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 it affects your eyes. But a light as it comes gradual and gradual and gradual, then you're able to accept it. The oil shall Moshiach is here. It, there's the beacon light of Moshiach. And I saw a medrash tonight on the idea of oil. Kumi oiri kiva oire. Kumi oire, bring, come up your light. Kiva oire, but your light came, because your light is here. And the medre says that this, the oil is the oil from Mashiach. And this is Vayara lekim ki es oil ki toiv. You know what the medre says? Mashiach is that individual, and there's a whole discussion, here's not the place, who gives a knack, the Malach Amores, who gives a knack, the sudden, if we every act tonight, this tonight, are the again them gresten, clouds of sudden, and therefore another beacon of light came apart. My friends, I know what we're going to say, I know what we want, and I therefore say, please let us all rise, stand up, and we'll say a, a prayer to the Rabbeinu Shalom. The first thing is, the Rabbeinu Shalom will give us a richas yomi mishonim toivim zum remschlite. And as we know, that the Rabbeinu Shalom should give the Hoyera to the Rebbe, that he should be in his gala. And it should be the Korev Mavish. And all of us should say, Ho yigal e sonu vi kalev, vi kabez di docheinu me alba kalvei sa oletz, and it should be chavirim kol Yisrael, vi noim ha'omein, let us all implement this what the Rebbe does, and this night tonight will be active, will be contributive, productive to the bias Moshiach, chazak, chazak, Venis Chazek and Am Yisrael Chai.
that Mashiach is coming now. Is this not giving Mashiach today? When we stood in the Kremlin with over 30,000 people and we listened to the Rebbe Schlitter speaking and we saw the Malchus of Mashiach the table in the same hall where they planned the downfall of the Rebbe and of the Badich. And to that end of the Kitsuki Lichtwick Rebbe was the Hesik Gemar. God drew to us, is this not the Yikuru or Hamiti for Is this not Gilui for Mashiach? When we took a plane and we went from city to city, we went from Moscow to Odessa, from Odessa to Kiev, from Kiev, and we went to, to the city bound with the Zaman Abelsky. From there we went to Kharkov, and from there we went to the city of Petersburg, no longer Leningrad, but Petersburg, you see, that's the Hashem. You must understand the scene in seven nights, 50,000 Jewish people screaming and giving progress to the heavens of my people. We're crying the shrine is loyal and crying and screaming the air that how now is the time. So should it die to you all. Is this the opinion of Jesus or Shiach the case? You must understand we are now down to the wire. When I was by the end of my Jesus, uh, coming back for a short a few days in the midst of the of the, 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 the of, of the Muhammad, which all the Mullah is the story of the world. President Bush, Major, and the Yoti call the entire United States Senate back to her own fix for a second. The whole world, all the story of the has picked up the Gibraltar to Israel to give the letter back to his books. The mind of the Gaelic Hatebah, as Secretary Baker said, we don't understand the whole concept of the book, but we know it's the highest level of spiritual warfare. Is this the opinion of Jimmy Mashiach? We must understand we are down to the wire. This is where we are now. And how we even to develop the path to the shade of the noise command but the hope of Jitia trying to rest there to cover the Ali Yogi, trying to dominate the same to dominate, standing together with incredible unity. And we're saying, you know, the Rebbe said, when I was there for Pesach, the Rebbe was looking for all the things that I gave you a dollar to Lenin. And the Rebbe said, those that are silent, I can start our Twitter. So this is to, to tear out the very, very basis of the evil. What happened afterwards? They took the statues down of him all over the country. They changed the name of Leningrad back to Petrovic. Is this the opinion of Jesus Mashiach? But you must understand that each and every one of us is a parenting truth. We have to leave our own boundaries. We have much as we think we have done till now. We have to do so much more in a very, very short period of time. But you must understand the Zoryevsky tale to the Goyim was the effort in the Asian, the Lord said the Renegal language of it. I back to the base of the Shashmishi who learned that all of it, the Yidin put the guns to hell, with the guns to hell turned off, and told him who's in the fighting. Look, on this time, which will be the last mix for Donald Gold, which will be the last honest historian that you have to do in Gold, which will be the last, I really think, to dig and to shine with the peanuts of lead from the inner of our heart from the Shia, the Jacob. We saw here with these 50,000 Jews when they stood on their feet. And they 
ששמענו בערב זה, כבר מהמחצית הראשונה של הערב, אין שום ספק שהרגשתי התעוררות רבה, ואני בטוחה שאני חולקת עם כל אחת ואחת מהיושבות כאן ברגשות אלו. עברו תשעה חודשים, כבר הזכירו, מכ"ח בניסן. דיברנו, למדנו, שוחחנו, יצאנו לפעולות. אבל מה יצא מכל זה? אני זוכרת לפני תשעה חודשים, כשערכנו כנס בכפר חב"ד, ואני הנחיתי. וסיפרתי סיפור שהיה עם הרב הרש"ב, שהרב הרש"ב צריך היה איזושהי גזירה קשה לבטל, גזירה על יהודים, ויצא עם עוד גדולי ישראל לכך, ולא הצליחו באותה משימה. ואמר מגדולי ישראל לרב הרש"ב, רב, מה השברון לבב? הרי עשינו כל מה שיכולנו. והרי בענה עשינו, אבל את הפעולה לא ביצענו. לא השגנו מה שרצינו. כי עם כל העניין על לימודים ועל פעולות ולצאת לעולם, הכל מאחורי גבינה, עברו כבר תשעה חודשים. הייתי אולי מרגישה ומנסה להגיד תשעה ירחי לידה. עשינו המקסימום במאמצים, במסירות נפש, עם כל כך הרבה רצון, עם כל כך הרבה מפנימיות, עם כל כך הרבה מעומק הלב. אבל משיח לא בא. גם הסעודה וגם הפועל ממש. אבל לצאת ולטפוח על השכם ולומר, אנחנו ירדנו את העולם ואנחנו הגענו לניוספייפר ואנחנו... אבל משיח לא בא. אם משיח לא בא, אם לא השגנו הערב הזה מה שרצינו, חס ושלום, אני אדם לגמרי לא של ייאוש, ולגמרי לא של נמיכת רוח, ותמיד בהתרוממות לעשות ולפעול. אבל אנחנו רוצים את משיח בפועל ממש, אנחנו לא רוצים רק לדעת שמשיח פה, אנחנו כבר גם פתחנו את העיניים, גם את זה הרבי ביקש. ואולי חסר דבר אחד. אני לא מדברת, נשים יקרות, חברות יקרות, אחיות יקרות, אני לא מדברת על אף אחת, אני מדברת עליי, אני מיודעה לדבר מהרהורי ליבו. אולי חסרה נקודה אחת ויחידה, שעליה הרבי מדבר הרבה פעמים, אבל היא נקודה הכי קשה, שאולי אותה במיוחד קשה לנו לקבל. <coughs> לצאת לדבר עם הרחוב זה מאוד קשה. אבל זה יותר קל מאשר לדבר על עצמי. הרב מדבר שמתאם קר עם מחשבה אחת, עם רצון אחד, יכול יהודי להגיע מדרגה של רשע גמור לדרגה של צדיק גמור. אם משיח לא בא, אולי משהו אצל כל אחת ואחת מאיתנו עוד לא קשור. אולי כל אחד ברגע כזה של התעוררות, ברגע כזה של תקווה, ברגע כזה של ציפייה. <coughs> ציפית למשיח. על זה אנחנו עתידים לתת את הדין, האם ציפינו למשיח? ציפינו. בכל הלב, בכל הנפש, רצינו. אלפיים שנה מצפים, אלפיים שנה מבקשים. והרגע שלי אתה מבטיח, זה הדור, וזה הרגע, וזו השעה. וכל כך הרבה פעמים שמענו היום את הממש, או ממש, או ממש, או לקוויסטי ממש. הוא פה. מה הוא פה? הוא פה. אנחנו מצפים לו בכל דור ודור משיח קיים. גם בדור הקודם היה משיח. הדור היה צריך להיות ראוי שמשיח יתגלה. משיח היה, תמיד היה משיח. מאז גואל ראשון ועד גואל אחרון, בכל דור היה משיח. 
יודע אינס בנס שכל אחד יודע בדיוק בוודאי מה. ואם אנחנו מבקשים שוב ראשם ועד מוסאי, אולי נגיד יחד את הפרק, פרק צדיק. זה פרק שכתוב עליו במיוחד, זה פרק של תשובה, וזה הפרק של המנהיגות של התקופה הזו. אולי נגיד ביחד את הפרק, וכל אחד יבקש מעומק הלב, כשיגיע הרגע, וכשתגיע השעה, ושנאכל בעיני בשר, למטה מעשרה טפחים, לקבל משיח נאו. תפילה למשה, איש האלוהים, אדוני, מעון אתה היית לנו, בדור ודור, בטרם הרים יולדו, ותחולל ארץ ותבל, ומעולם עד עולם, אתה אל, תשב אנוש עד דקה, ותאמר, שובו בני אדם, כי אלף שנים בעיניך, כיום אתמול, כי יעבור, והשמורה בלילה, זרמתם של נא יהיו, בבוקר כחציר יחלוף, בבוקר יציץ וחלף, לערב ימולל ויבש, כי חלינו באפיך ובחמתך נבהלנו. שת עוונותינו לנגדך, עלומינו למאור פניך, כי כל ימינו פנו בעברתך, כי לינו שנינו כמו הגה. ימי שנותינו בהם שבעים שנה, ואם בגבורות שמונים שנה, ורובם עמל ואבן. כי גז חיש בנעופה, מי יודע עוז אפיך וחירתך עברתך. למנות ימינו, כן הודה, ונביא לבב חוכמה. שוב האדוני, עד מוסל, וינחם על עבדיך, שבענו בבוקר חסדיך, ונרננה ונשמחה בכל ימינו. שמחנו כי מותי ניתנו, שנות ראינו רעה, יראה אל עבדיך פועליך, 
Mitzoyim, and for evenings, and I was really truly positive that I wouldn't read them. But it's not a disappointment. I thought that what Rabbi Groner said was absolutely the most uplifting thing. This is not a disappointment. What we have done tonight, as we have brought it down, almost lamato mi asarot fochim down here. I don't think anybody will walk out of this room tonight the same person. Some of you will be very tired from standing, but none of us will walk out the same person, Baruchnius. Before I finish, I'd like to make just a few announcements. I hope you don't have to do this, but there are Mitzayim on Chof Bey Shvat. And if we have to do it, and that will bring the Gula closer to Chof Bey's in the evening or Chof, or Chof Gimel in the morning, please join. Monday evening, let me spot on January 6th, the first Yorzeit of Eti Shagalov at Lubavitcher Yeshiva on Albany Avenue. Please come. I did not prepare an ending speech. I really didn't. But since I'm here, I feel I have to end with something. I've told the story many times, but I think it fits. Before I tell you the story, I'm going to tell you the reactions of my students that I didn't finish before when I told them about this Mlava Malkia. This is in a base Yaakov school, my friends, not in a base Rivka school. In every class they said, Mora, what a wonderful idea. Why didn't you think of it before? And in another class, one of the girls said, why are you keeping it to yourselves? Why haven't you invited the world? We have. <coughs> the Gyula Horisheno was done by Arn and Meshe. The Gyula Hashnia was by Esther and Mordechai. The Gyula Hamitis Vashlemo will be by Eliyahu and Moshiach. Arn and Meshe, Aleph Mem, Aim. Esther and Mordechai, Aleph Mem, Aim. Eliyahu and Moshiach, Aleph Mem, Aim. Because, my sisters, it is up to us. We are the Gilgulim, and we will do it. If we didn't do it at a quarter to one, we can do it at 10 to one. Please walk out of this room in a positive sense. We have not failed, we have built. This was not an evening of testing. This was a statement. I think that this was a small step for women and a large step for men.